What's up, guys? It's the Free Show. I'm your boy Cyrex, and this is episode 12. So uh, it's been a couple days since I uh, recorded an episode. So I want to start by saying to those of you who do listen, especially those who listen all the way through, I do want to thank you for listening. It's definitely an enjoyable show to make, so it means a lot that you show me that this is an enjoyable show to listen to as well. Definitely love making it. And to follow me on all of my social media, I mean, you know, Twitter, YouTube, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel, of course, Cyrex MC, C-Y-R-E-X-M-C, just like on the Twitter, just like on Facebook, just like on Instagram, on Musical.ly, on SoundCloud, on, uh, what else? My goodness, I can't. I'm everything. So, uh, I don't, you know, as usual, I don't really have any topics prepared. But I did actually want to go in a little bit about about something called an industry plant. I'm hearing a couple things coming out about the possibility of of Chance the Rapper being an industry plant. Now, what I've understood that to be is they put on this facade that they're fairly independent or independent entirely and then uh, it turns out they're really not. They're just, you know, backed by major players but putting on this facade of being independent. Now, I mean... Considering the very clean and very, I mean, very clean trajectory that Chance the Rapper has had, I mean, I don't just assume that's true, but I find it kind of plausible. I just, you know, upon hearing it, you know, thinking about, you know what, things have gone pretty, or at least they've appeared to go pretty smoothly. You know, coming off uh, acid rap and that appearance on Justin Bieber's song. Uh, I'm not even sure of the name of the song, but I mean, oh, also with Childish Gambino's brand, he expanded there too. I mean, all those things just really blew him up. And I remember when the tape, around the time that the tape first came out, acid rap, um, I was actually. I had only heard of Chance the Rapper from They Don't Like Me by Childish Gambino on the royalty mixtape. <clears throat> now, of course, anybody who knows me knows I'm a big fan of Childish Gambino. I didn't, I wasn't in love with the royalty mixtape, but I thought it was really good, you know? He brought some of his best rhymes ever and some of his, uh, you know, by that time, um, you know, most mainstream stuff. And he had this song on there featuring Chance the Rapper called They Don't Like Me. That it kind of, it actually, it used a sample of Oh, I Think They Like Me by them franchise boys. And, I mean, really, even though Chance is listed as a feature, really, he does the majority of the song. It, there's no hook, but it's like, uh, Chance, I mean, um, Gambino does a couple, like a, a four bar intro, then Chance just goes in for the majority of the song. And then Gambino comes back in at the end with eight bars. And I mean, it was a dope song. It's, it's a really dope song. And um, from there, I was just like, you know, this Chance dude is pretty cool. I thought he was Southern at the time, but I was like, this guy's pretty cool. So then Acid Rap came out, and I downloaded it from Dat Piff. Of course, it was a free project. And around that time, I, I don't know if I even got to it for a couple weeks. But uh, I remember my best friend Louie and I, we started to talk about it. And so that's when I really started to listen to it. I was like, this shit is pretty wild. Like, I'm not... You know, it has, I don't know if it's held up in my, you know, in my opinion of it all these years, because it was 2013, it's 2017 now, and I can say that things have definitely changed for me. 
Um, but for that time, I mean, I really enjoyed it. You know, good ass intro is tight. That uh, Push Your Man Paranoia track is tight. Even though that, I never understood that whole silent, the whole minute of silence. Allegedly, it was because people who were on acid would like hear something or feel something during that time, but I mean, most people are doing acid, but whatever. You know, I loved Cocoa Butter Kisses, and by that time, I was, I was already a fan of kids these days. So, um, that was the first time that I heard Chance and Vic Mensa together. I didn't even know that they were tight. So I listened to that. That was, I mean, that, that joint is tight. But, and then that burst by Twista. Oof. I've always been, I've always thought Twista was dope. You know, Juice, that's that banger. I mean, he just brought, he just brought enough to the table. He brought like the whole fucking package. He has some bars, I mean, not in love with all of them, but I mean, he has bars, you know, he has that melody, that rhythm, that people love a high-pitched voice. People love that high-pitched voice shit. Now, apparently he dropped mixtapes, like every, um... Every, what's it called? It's in the cooler. Every, like, year of his high school, which, I mean, admittedly, I should have done, but whatever. You know, he did it, and, <clears throat> and then he dropped 10 Day. Went back to 10 Day, and 10 Day was pretty dope, too. Now, based on what I know about his beginnings, I'm not inclined to say that he's an industry plant. I didn't, sorry. Oh, shit. But, you know, based on such a, like I said before, clean trajectory. You make a podcast? Yeah. What? So, Leanne has joined us here. We're talking about the possibility of an industry plant. What do you need? Oh, right. It's in there. Now, won't you send me your location? That's all I want to know. Right. So, <clears throat> what was that? Oh yeah, we were talking about the uh, possibility of Chance being an industry plant. And now, huh? oh, what that is is somebody who gives off the facade of being independent, but it turns out they're not really independent. They're like backed by some major players, some major industry cats, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm arguing that while I don't think that at face value, I think it's a plausible theory because Chance has definitely had a very clean trajectory. He has. Wow. This nigga. That's really loud. Okay. Oh, shit. Um, apparently somebody's a really big fan of On Sight by Kanye West. Anyway. Just the fact. Where are you going? Oh, I kept going. I guess turn around. Um, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked here. I liked most of the tracks. Um, I, you know, I'm not here to give an, a review of any of his work. Closing family. Okay. He's out. Well, wait, car. You're gonna get cash back, right? Yeah. Oh crap. It's upstairs. Yeah. Which one? Uh, it's the red one. Don't worry, ain't much on there. <laughs> I'm poor. <laughs> uh, let me close this door before the cat tries to escape. Uh, yeah, I don't do much editing. I do not do much editing on here. So thank you for bearing with that too, because I'm sure there's a lot of noise and, you know, unpleasant sounds, coughs and, uh, throat clearing and what have you. But yeah, I liked acid rap, and I, I, then I got into 10 Day. 
I thought Ten Day was great too. Have fun. My hands going up. Anyway, I thought Ten Day was dope. You know, that's another time that I heard uh, Vic Mensa with uh, with Chance and Salima too, or Salim. I I don't know how to pronounce that. Sulaim S Q L A I M A N. Salim and Salima. And uh, I remember him from what from occasion. They didn't make it up tonight. Um, by kids in the hall, they did that together. That was a collab. Uh, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked there. Well, no, I'm still sound. Anyway, <laughs> now that one was that one just was a tight mixtape. And the fact that he did that before, it was based on his 10-day suspension for, I believe it was he was caught with marijuana in high school. Anyway, um, that was just an enjoyable mixtape. He was suspended for 10 days, and it had inspired something, something really dope. That, came, that one came out in 2012, and I mean, I'm sure you guys know 2012 was like the last real, you know... They call it they call it backpack rap. I don't like that term. Backpack rap. I said in one of my verses, uh, this ain't back this ain't backpack rap. It's cross side crying down your back fat trying to establish that. <laughs> I don't even know. It's fun though. Um, that was when I was like trying to just write shocking stuff or crazy stuff or just different stuff I guess I was trying to I'm not gonna lie on that song I was kind of trying to trying to bite the like early odd future lo-fi element it's it wasn't you know it, it didn't come to fruition because that's just not me I'm me this is me music and podcasts this is what I do <laughs> so Anyway, I did enjoy those two mixtapes, and so um, I was looking forward to this surf project for, I mean, we were, we were all looking forward to it for like two, well, two years almost, or I think it was two years. So they said, you know, it's going to be the social experiment. I'm like, this guy with a band? Well, and he's going to be in a band with two of the members who were in Kids These Days, the trumpeter Nico Segal, who used to be called Donnie Trumpet for a little while, um, and the uh, the drummer Sticks. plus he's going to be with Nate Fox and Peter Cottontail, two dope producers who I heard through his music, like two dope two producers who gave him hits. That's some pretty awesome stuff. So the fact that, you know, the six of them, or the five of them, yeah, I believe it's the five of them. Unless there's one, one more somebody else member. I don't know. I think I am missing somebody, though. Oh, no, I'm not, actually. And so... You know, we were looking forward to that when that Sunday candy track was hot. That definitely contributed to his brand, the uh, the gospel sounds. Definitely loves his gospel sounds. I like the sounds of gospel, but I don't. I just don't like having religion pushed on me. You know, personally, just I'm I'm not. Uh, I'm not that. <clears throat> so I mean, it was a good song though, and so we waited and waited and waited. You know, we wanted new stuff, and I mean, he was taking it easy. He was appearing on all these guest appearances, Justin Bieber, you know. And apparently Justin Bieber, uh, that, that uh, verse conflicted with him being able to contribute a verse to The Worst Guys by Childish Gambino. Just kind of whack. Like, I've been waiting for them to work together for a long time, but... Well, now that I've been hearing, you know, their most recent music, I'm not so excited for that. If they go back to how they were when they were, like, really working together and really, like, you know, releasing that music, then, I mean, that, that I can get excited about. But this new shit that they're both on, no. No, I'm not. 
I'm not excited about it. I don't like it though. <laughs> Whatever though. Uh, we're talking about chance being in, or the possibility. I want to be very clear, the possibility of him being an industry plant. Now, that, uh, if the scheme is entirely to, to say that he's, he looks independent, but he's trying to come off, or he, he, look, he, he's trying to come off independent, he looks independent, but he's actually backed by major players and major industry, uh, major industry players, major, major industry moving parts. Or parts, I, I don't even know if I worded that correctly. But I'm sure you understand. Then I still remain, that's plausible. Because everything about his organic, I mean, well, I mean, about the popularity before he started really, like, just really just blowing, just going almost into the, into a stratosphere. It's like he, he passed this level. Like, he went straight past the likes of Young Thug, who was releasing mixtapes before him. He went straight past the likes of Tyler, the Creator, who was releasing music before him. Uh, straight past... Uh, most of Odd Future, actually all of Odd Future, except for time, except for uh, maybe Frank Ocean. Uh, she went straight past a lot of artists in the matter of a year or two. So, by, you know, twenty fourteen, when that I, I believe that's when that 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 appearance came out with Justin with uh, Justin Bieber. You know, everybody was talking about acid rap. Yo, like, honestly, people that I know, like, yo, straight up, the people that I know, and I hate to put y'all on blast like this, but all the people that I roll with, all the people I roll with, um, again, I hate to put y'all on blast like this, but I mean, it's just my show, so, but Angie, Chris, Chris, Trip, like, uh, you know, Trippy Lion, them, like, you know, Simon, KJ, everybody at that time, really. They was late on that. I was, like, listening to that shit in the whip. You know, before they was even rocking with it. I was right, I was right, like, and I hate, to, maybe I'm just coming off like the hipster. Maybe it's not them, maybe it's me. Maybe I just happened to find them first. But on the real shit, like, that shit was old news to me. When they had just started playing it. Which, I mean... I guess feel good, like... It, 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 I guess it feels good to act like a hipster sometimes. Whatever. <laughs> sue me. Don't actually sue me, though. I, I don't have any money. Anyway, in 2015... We, uh... We started to get a lot more of the surf stuff. And we finally got surf. Now, we had already known for like a month or so that it was going to be Donnie Trumpet and the Social Experiment. So they had already made it clear that Donnie Trumpet is the leader of this project and that Chance would be involved, you know, as of, course, of course as part of the band with the whole, with the whole production. The whole, the whole band did the whole production front to back. I think they had some help from some other, you know, maybe, I don't know. I'm not going to look that up right now. But they... They did it front to back, basically. Now, we should have known from that that it was going to be a varied project, even though people had probably been told, hey, it's not going to be all about Chance. Chance is not even going to rap on every track. I mean, I think they still expected a Chance tape. Because, I mean, Chance was the one they knew. People had heard about kids these days, but they probably heard through Chance. People had heard about Nate Fox and Peter Cottontail, but probably heard of him through a chance. So, that just, I mean, it didn't go, it, with that and the mixing difficulties and the, like some of the production choices and all that stuff, 
I mean, we already know, even though it was given, like, it was rave reviews, like, and the whole, oh, this is awesome, you can get it, just, like, you just have to go to iTunes, the iTunes store, and just click get. It was free. And it had lots of uncredited appearances from No Name, from J. Cole, Busted Rhymes, B.O.B., Dram, uh, Joey Perp, uh, who else? Um, you know, Jamila Woods, everybody knew she was on Sunday Candy. But yeah, I mean, lots of uh, appearances that seemed to have been uncredited on purpose because they wanted to make, you know, they, they it was may maybe the thing that wasn't on the oven up with the labels that each of these artists were signed to because to get, you know, but that might might be more to the point actually now that I think about that, because the narrative of not crediting them because of their high profile and because of their because of how the contracts would go how this would go contractually, that um, you know it would just make you think with a guest list like that you must have some major backing or some serious client you must have, like put in your ears, like the the. To, to, for you to be this is not Chance the Rapper's first major project but this is the first major project project of Donnie Trump and the Social Experiment of which Chance is a member but this is a brand new entity this is a brand new entity producing brand new music producing different music from what Chance makes on his own or uh, with just his name on the bill so it turned into or I guess it could be, you know, it was that all these things were approved by a major player that, and I'm just playing, this is not an accusation, I'm just playing, you know, devil's advocate to this theory, you know, like I said, there's some plausibility to it, I'm not sour at chance, I don't have a problem with chance, but, I mean, let's explore this at least, you know, let's at least have this discussion, so, what, you know, what's so implausible about the idea of they went a certain way um, with some major backing, not just for distribution, but I guess, you know, who they're with, you know, of course they went, um, they wrote with iTunes to make this free. Um, I believe it's on Spotify though, but I, know, I don't have no, I don't remember exactly how that went as far as distribution right at the time of release but I know it was free just free right off the iTunes store now it's a different story for Spotify because Spotify the app on your on your computer is free for use you know you don't have to pay for that but then you have uh, Spotify on your phone you have to have Spotify Premium for that. Spotify is basically like the Hulu of of, of uh, streaming services. At least you, you could use it a little bit, but nah. And then you have Apple Music and Tidal. Uh, you have to be you have to be uh, currently subscribed to do that shit or to use it. Period. So I, I really don't know how that would have gone at the time of release, but again, this fuels, I guess, uh, the possibility that they had major players and they just didn't publicize who, uh, who got them these, these major appearances. And maybe not publicizing or not crediting them on the actual, you know, track listing, maybe that was to push that narrative, or maybe that was, because the narrative was to, not only to make it a surprise, because people wanted, they knew it, they knew people wanted a chance tape, but that's not what they were going to give them. So, I mean, for where we are right now, I mean, I would love to hear what you think of this, please leave a comment there. Um, like I said, be sure to subscribe there. 
Uh, but anyway, I'm going to keep going a little bit more here. So, this, I remember watching the Needle Drops review, and he did point out some issues in the, in the mixing. Now, they didn't, I don't remember them proving to be an issue for me. What the issue was for me, and I talked about this with Louis extensively, because we were both really looking forward to that album. We were like, yo, this is going to be something crazy now. Because I I know I know I wanted a chance tape. I was a little wary, but I was I was gonna keep an open mind, because I love I love instruments. I just love instruments. So I was like, okay, an album with these minds, knowing the music that they tend to make together, it should be really interesting. And it just wasn't. The album just wasn't that interesting. It was pretty forgettable. Not a lot of memorable tracks. You know, Miracle, I think that song is great, but it just, that build up, oh my goodness. It's just like, you know what? I'll just, I just, I, I just don't want to deal with this side, so you skip. Then like, Slip Slide, Slip Slide was cool. You know, that's all it was, it was cool. Um, but again, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna be reviewing any of the, any of the project, any of the chance projects that I'm talking about. Just giving like maybe my brief opinion on them, but staying on more on this topic, um, it had major appearances, but as an album, it just wasn't all that. And you know, maybe it was that, maybe it was those mixing issues, because the mixing and mastering, I mean makes or breaks a track and anybody who really knows music really knows this so um you know this didn't of course it continued well for like his legend you know sunday candy still a great track and still able to you know catapult him towards stuff So, uh, months later, I found this, what is it, what did I find, oh, it was, I think it was like a couple months later though, I found the free, bass freestyle mixtape, Little B and Chance the Rapper, I was like, what, Little B and Chance the Rapper, now, Little B, I, I you know I I, I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed his verse on on Vans. Got my Vans on, but they look like sneakers. He has the first verse, and I like the character. You know, I don't really like the music much. I think it's cool that he releases so much music. To be honest, I would love to be as prolific as him. Even though I know it wouldn't bode particularly well. But that mixtape was really cool. And it's it's a lot better when you just embrace the freestyle element. Like when you just, you know, when you just get lit, you just have a beer or two, you know, puff a little bit, you know, just relax yourself. You're gonna enjoy that. You're gonna enjoy that tape, or you can you can appreciate the tape at least. And it's six tracks, I believe. Now a couple of them are pretty long, but I mean it's just freestyles, just 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 freestyles. But that was just for you know Dap Piff too, and that wasn't really meant to be big. That was just the two of them doing something together. It's a fun mixtape though. I re highly recommend. Uh, anybody who likes either of them to check it out definitely they have one appearance on there by no name on the first track and I mean, that shit, that shit is just dope it's just dope um, so months later we kept getting all these I guess notifications and all these previews and all this teasing on this basically this rollout for what we refer to as chance 3 um, 
I don't know who started that term, Chance 3, but I remember that he did refer to it like that on his verse for from Ultralight Beam in early 2016. That was the first track on Kanye's Life of Pablo. And so... The, um, the mixtape came basically a couple months later. You know, it came in, uh, 2016 coloring book. And I was, I was excited when I, when I first, uh, when I first heard, I mean, or not heard, but when I first heard of it, like, I just saw it that day. I still had my free iTunes trial, my free Apple Music trial. And I was like, oh, wow, let's, yeah, let's check this out for sure. I don't like it. So many of the songs I just don't like. Like, I don't like him mumbling and croaking, and I don't like him braying like a donkey, like on uh, No Problem, but whatever. I mean, it seems to have made him considerably bigger, so I'm definitely happy for that. And I think this put him in a different stratosphere because now, now he's with Lil Wayne and Two Chains. He's with Lil Yachty and Young Thug. You know, he's working with Kanye again, even though that all we got doing was, I mean, a mess. I was working with T Pain, No Name again, and just a bunch of a bunch of names that, you know, a bunch of names that people really expected to see them with. He's like when he's on, he's gonna he's gonna work with this guy, and the, most of those names are there, at least ones that I can think of off the top of my head. So, you know that one went over, and that streamed like crazy. People are look, people were waiting for this mixtape for three years or two years. Whenever you got into, you were like, this is, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for this chance three, and they put it on streaming services. He, I mean, everybody knows he, he publicized um, down the line that he made a deal with Apple Music to make it exclusive for two weeks. And I mean, I'm not going to lie, you offered me half a million dollars to, to put this only on Apple Music for two weeks. I mean, I'm a big proponent of just accessibility, but I mean, I need, I need that. <laughs> I'm gonna take that. Shit. Two weeks? If you trap out the bandwidth for my album, as the academic says, if you trap out the bandwidth, if you download my shit illegally, I don't care. If they're just telling me, oh no, I can't put that shit on a SoundCloud for you to listen to for free, two weeks it's gonna make its way onto one of those sites it's gonna make its way onto uh, you know like rapid share and these sites where people post albums the same way that they they post that they did uh, the same the same way they did Kanye on Life of Pablo the same way that Jay did on his last two albums they, they gonna find it so you can find my you can find my album you tell me you, you can't afford album music and you just want to buy the album or you just want to download the album illegally. I'm like, okay. The whole thing is I give you the option that either to get it for free or to give me money for it. You got no money, listen to it free. You got some money you don't like me, want to give it to me? Let me hold that. <laughs> So I'm definitely, uh, I gotta say, no, that was a good move as far as that two-week exclusivity. But again, it does further that narrative, or it does further this theory that he's an industry plant. I mean, literally partnering with Apple like that, that's industry. You know, you've heard all these discussions about now the tech companies are taking, are really taking over the music industry. Now, Apple... Tidal and Spotify, they're the ones who are, you know, trying to, trying to slap EMI, Sony, and Universal in the face. 
doesn't look like they're succeeding entirely so far, but who's to say they can't? And who's to say they don't want to, you know, take, who's to say they don't want to, they don't want to take certain artists and do all their shit exclusive? I bet if, I bet they would love to offer, I bet Apple would love to offer Drake or they would love to be able to find a low, low enough number to, to offer Drake to put all of his music solely on Apple Music. I bet that uh, Spotify, even though I know, I mean, it's pretty out there that they have considerably less money than Apple, well, I bet they'd love to do the same thing. Now, um, I don't know, uh, what the case is as far as that kind of development but I guess we'll see in the coming months coming years how they go about that anyway it's just the fact that okay anyway just the fact that the fact that, that was an exclusive for such a high number and Again, it's just another part of this clean trajectory, like not getting into conflicts, not getting into, you know, serious things or serious situations, serious altercations, but just seem to be getting considerably bigger every year. And now this whole thing about not only having, seeming to have influence to say, or to say with, uh, you know, with media following, that the Gram the uh what's it called? The Gram phone, the Grammy Academy are going to accept SoundCloud streams as part of um I guess consideration for Grammys. That's pretty that's a pretty wild statement and I mean you to sit for somebody to do that organically in five years you know four or five years that's pretty unprecedented or four or five years being like really active and really known that's unprecedented you know Drake couldn't even do that right now he's been famous for eight or nine years or seven or eight years you know uh I mean Jay with everything that he's done, I don't I don't know I don't know if he could just snap his finger. Now I'm not saying Jay snapped his fingers and said that, but he certainly said it. And he certainly won the Grammy. So we will see how uh, that kind of thing develops. Now I mean I personally don't know anybody off the top of my head who's been proven to be in this in industry plan. I've thought, you know, for the longest, I've thought that Travis Scott is an industry plant. It seems that his his work generates a lot of buzz. I truly don't see why. I think that his music is incredibly vapid and just terrible. And his accolades honestly bewilder me. But maybe that's just me hating. I don't know. Everything's hating in this day and age. You know, you give an artist a bunch of chances. And it's just like, ugh, this is terrible music. It just sucks. But that's just me. A lot of other people like it. I can't tell other people what's it like. I know that for a fact. But I love you for loving the show. <laughs> um, I don't know if I have any more thoughts on this whole Chance the Rapper... Uh, possibly being an industry plant thing. Um, you know, we know he won the Grammy. Oh, this whole thing about him allegedly being able to save SoundCloud, too. You know, that'd be a little wild. But then it seems like uh, he dropped a song with Young Thug called Big Bees. And I, I guess... People think that that I guess it's coming across like that's their plan is to release a song that's gonna generate enough streams to save the platform. Which when I heard about that, I'm like, nah, that's not your plan. 
Nah. Nah. I really hope that's not their card. Because that would be an absolutely terrible one. An absolutely terrible one. Doesn't make sense. Another song. Another song that's as big as another song that's um, with you know with this guy with, with him and me we work together but we have totally different audiences and uh, we're both these big, big SoundCloud guys or SoundCloud artists we got big on SoundCloud nah that couldn't be the plan yeah there has to be something else there but we're gonna see and this goes on YouTube anyway so regardless of what happens you'll be able to listen to this. Let me not say that like that, though. That sounds so capricious. That sounds like, oh my god, it sounds like I'm taking YouTube for granted. Watch all my shit gets taken down like the day after I upload this. Nah, I ain't talking down SoundCloud or anything. But, I mean, I'm just saying this is going on YouTube, so. You know, these might go on, these, these might start going back on SoundCloud sometime soon, but we'll see. But until then, um... That's really my whole thought on that. You know, we're, I'm, we're seeing more discussions and more people asking about Chance the Rapper being a SoundCloud. I'm not a SoundCloud, a, an industry plant. And I guess in the coming months, more news will develop. Considering, like, or I guess assuming that people care about that. I see why they would, but I also don't. So, you know, I'm not going to dictate that. But if more stuff develops on that, and you guys do uh, care to know some more about that, or at least have me talk about it, I would love for you to get in the comments and just talk to me. And talk to me about this topic. How do you feel about this? You know, do you agree uh, with, you know, I basically spent the whole episode playing devil's advocate, but this isn't something that I fully believe. This is just something that I find plausible, and I'm a stats guy. So I just like to look at all of the possibilities, and this is something that based on certain factors, certain variables, you know, there may be significant evidence to, to display at least this type of information, to display at least this type of, uh, to at least prove this theory to be partially correct. But at the same time, you know, who's to say all of this isn't all this isn't flim flam cockamamie craziness. <laughs> we'll see. So once again I want to thank you guys for listening. This is the free show. You can follow me on everything. Cyrex M C C Y R E X M C. Uh got the new song out now, Stage. So go listen to that. Go copy it off Google Play, copy it off iTunes. Get it on Tidal, get it on Apple Music, on Spotify, on SoundCloud, everywhere. Let's go ahead and listen to that. And once again, thank you, thank you for listening. This is episode 12 of The Freak Show. And this will probably go up like real soon. Like I'm, I'm probably gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna get a lot more frequent with these episodes. So, have a good night.